Road to Shredded Day 8. We're starting with weighted chin-ups with chains, a useful variation for overcoming the natural top sticking point. Unlike the big three, which is limited by your bottom strength, here it is entirely possible to fail in getting your chin over the bar. This is because of free weight gravity, and this applies to most back movements, except for T-bar rows. So chin-ups are not lengthened bias. This is why many street lifters do pause rips at the top. Of course, they may also do a dead hang, in addition to isometrics and sometimes double pausing. Overloading the top is incredibly useful for strength development. You could even argue for squeezing the lats, but I'm really doing this to explode and handle heavier weights that I normally cannot do, while at the same time, minimizing overuse. I'm using the same grip as last week. So I did 155 with 45 chain. That is 200 pounds at the top. That's heavy. You feel your entire body pulling apart. And I promise you, it's going to help when I remove the chains after. So it looks like my conjugate background is proving to be quite useful on weighted chins. Now the same logic cannot be applied to dips in terms of sticking points, but for that it's about reducing shoulder problems and getting more triceps out of it. But with chin-ups, it's a hybrid motion that does develop your top end strength without needing to train isometrics separately and teaches you how to really horse crack those loads, as Eric Bugenhagen would say. And that is what I'm gonna do when there's a calm day resistance. So that was really heavy, really didn't wanna do any pull-ups after that. So I went down on the floor, hit some spreader pull-downs, but I actually use an underhand grip with it. See, you can rotate in any direction, and this was my first time ever doing this, so it'll be my default moving forward. More biceps, that's what I'm looking for, and the elbows are even more tucked in. Now, the only con with the spreader bar is that I can't fully stretch at the top, which is fine for being 100% lat bias, but if I want more overall back, this is where the mag grips come in. So you'll see those next workout. And for rows, I do my signature cable inverter row. Guys, if you like chest supported rows, you need to give these a shot. First of all, the moment you're done your lap pull downs, all you have to do is lie down and get to work. There's no other setup required. So that saves a lot of time. And this is incredibly lower back friendly and you're pulling in a diagonal angle, similar to a Yates row, but without compromising the range of motion, you can squeeze the lats very hard. It also helps with bench press tightness. So I would say this will reduce shoulder injuries. And because you have two points of contact for stability, you can really grind away. So it's not common to hit failure on rows, especially when they are not length and bias, right? Well, here, you can give it your all without the lower back being a limiting factor. That means that tomorrow I can come in, hit some heavy legs, it won't be a problem. So if these are good enough for me and you don't need that much weight, it'll be around the same as your lap pull down, then these should be good for anyone, especially if you don't care about what others think. I'm not telling you to do this at a commercial gym, although I might. That's how good this exercise is. Now for biceps, we hit concentration curls this time Standing up, bending forward a bit, you get a slightly better squeeze. This is kind of a hybrid way between what Arnold used to do and a more modern take because here I have arm support. So you want bracing for maximum motor unit recruitment. I'm not a fan of having the arm be in and across the body. You can't lift as much weight and it becomes too much shortened, emphasized. Here, it's a good strength curve where the mid range is still getting some great work in. You can grind the top. And if you want, you can lean back a bit for more stretch, but that's not why I do this. For stretch, I'd rather sit down and have my torso be vertical or even laying back. So the way I'm showing you here is similar to the normal way. There's nothing magical about it. Don't overthink a concentration curl. I beg you, please. Biceps are not a complicated muscle after all, but it is nice knowing that you can exert maximum force. So I like to alternate between the plyometric box and the bend forward version, as well as using an easy bar, arm wrestling style. That's a weird one, which I'll show you soon. Anyway, it doesn't matter which variation you do of concentration curls, just know that it's an excellent preacher curl alternative, and it forces you to be strict. I also like the fact that it's unilateral. In my case, my left arm is stronger than my right, so I open up with the right, because when fatigue kicks in, it can allow the stronger arm to match the weaker. So I don't want there to be a great strength discrepancy. So here's the last rep and you'll see what I mean. If I was bending forward the other direction, I wouldn't be able to grind this. But here I could lean into the curl and there you go. I corrected the joint angle. I could have hit momentary muscular failure as well, but this is another way to train. For the last biceps exercise, we do classic barbell curls. Straight bar, elbows are tucked in, my body is vertical and I'm lowering the bar in front of the body, almost exaggerated. This way I can really feel the biceps on the way down. So not only does this reduce golfer's elbow. I know I keep stressing that in every video, but it's so important guys, especially when you're curling above 95 pounds. It also gives you the same hypertrophy outcomes. 
look at the biceps. Look at the pump, look at the straining. There is no explosiveness whatsoever, not even an ounce of cheating. Everything is tight, locked in, cyborg precision technique. These are the exercises that benefit from it. When something is restrictive on the joints, or you don't want to go super heavy on an isolation movement, slow down that negative and stop exploding all the time. Now guys are going to say, well, what about motor unit recruitment? Doesn't going slowly minimize that? Yo, if you hit failure, everything's been properly fatigued. So you need to drop your ego, man, including for curling up. Now there reaches a point where there's so much fatigue buildup that that can cause you to prematurely stop a set. But if it is lasting, let's say 60 to 90 seconds tops, then you know it's clean. So although the time and the tension is completely irrelevant, that is not a mechanism for hypertrophy, we can compare the time that it takes to do a set slowly versus higher repetitions. So if you did 10 slow reps, that might be 30 plus with a fast tempo. Who knows? All I could say is that I'm not jerking these barbell curls and my biceps feel and look amazing. So give it a shot. Now here's some posing. The lean gains are already coming in. Down another pound, pound and a half. You can see the lower back, upper back. Many muscles are coming in and there's some striations at play. It looks like my back stores the least amount of fat. Vacuum pose. The serratus and the ribs are looking sharp. Both biceps are starting to look separated. Oh man, I'm starting to get excited. So let's keep grinding, showing you what real hardcore training is all about.